in my childhood, I thought that Yu-Gi-Oh was really expensive. I used to compare my Yu-Gi-Oh cards to the Beckett list that used to come out to get all of my card prices, and boy, it didn't matter that my cards were damaged around the edges, this strategy was worth over $300, and let's be honest, over $100 for an elementary school kid is freaking rich. Now that I'm a lot older, I realize that a lot of the cards that I had were damaged beyond any type of value, but some of those old cards that I probably should have held on instead of using them to make noises for my bike are worth thousands of dollars. And in this video, we're going to be talking about the most expensive cards in Yu-Gi-Oh! Now I'm going to have a few rules for this video because I wouldn't be the king of games if I didn't present some type of fun for this. Rule number one is that the card has to be printed a significant amount of times. Going over the most rarest and expensive cards sounds like an entire idea for a whole nother video. So if you guys want to see what are the rarest and expensive, then be sure to like this video and let us know down below in the comment section. Rule number two is in order for us to validate the card's expense, there has to be multiple copies on the market right now in order for us to justify its price. I'll be using sites like eBay and TCG Player to verify the card's worth, and I think that's a pretty good starting point, so let's jump on in. The cheapest, most expensive card on this list, I know that's kind of weird that I have a cheap, most expensive card, is Blue Eye Shining Dragon. Now, not just any Blue Eye Shining Dragon will get you the price tag of $900, but Blue Eye Shining Dragon from the Retro Pack series is a really hard find. The reason why is because in the Retro Pack set, it was really hard to pull certain cards. That in the run of the Retro Pack series itself was extremely limited. Good luck finding a Blue Eye Shining Dragon. The cool thing about this is that I actually know someone that owns this card. It's probably one of the only cards on this list that I have seen in person in my life, and its effect isn't actually great. Now this card can't be normal summoned or set, and can only be special summoned by tributing a Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon you control. So you have to give up three Blue Eyes, a Polymerization, and a Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon for this card. That is a lot of cards. Now on the plus side, while it does seem weaker than Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon, it gains 300 attack for every dragon monster in your graveyard. So wait, wait, three, six, nine, two. It is still weaker than Blue Eyes, what the, what the deuce? The next thing about Blue Eyes Shining Dragon is that if your opponent wants to target it with a monster spell or trap, it's just not happening against this card. So I guess you do sacrifice a little bit of attack unless you have more dragon monsters in your graveyard for the security of having a monster that will get destroyed by a card like Dark Hole or Regeki. Yeah, that, that's a lot of work. The next card has a more devastating effect. And by devastating, I just mean it's easier to play. Magic Formula is going to be the first card to break that $1,000 barrier, but it's not just any Magic Formula that will do it. In specific, not only are you going to need a Magic Formula from the Gladiator's Assault set, you're also going to have to have it be first edition. Now, you can still kind of get it for a thousand if it's lightly played, but anything other than that, don't even worry about it. Magic Formula starts off strong by only being able to be equipped to a Dark Magician or a Dark Magician Girl. One would think a card that is that specific to certain monsters would have devastating effects. Magic Formula increases the monster's attack by 700. Now, just when you guys thought you would give up all hope on Magic Formula, it does have a second ability. When it is sent from the field to the graveyard, you get to gain a thousand life points. Yeah, it's like Horn of the Unicorn and Diet Keto had a baby. Now, Magic Formula is expensive because of that Gladiator's Assault set. It was extremely hard to get secret rares, and it was even harder to get first edition prints of this card. It is a highly sought after card, and if you guys are trying to build a Yugi deck, then, I mean, it's kind of one of those cards you might want to look into. Moving on a step higher in the expensive list, Dark Magician finally makes its debut in this list, and no, not just any Dark Magician will cut it. You are going to need the Dark Duel Stories version of this Dark Magician monster, and it sits roughly around $1,100. Now, Dark Magician doesn't necessarily have an effect, but it is the ultimate wizard in terms of attack and defense. Even though there's a monster named Cosmo Queen that has considerably better stats in attack and defense, but 
I guess she's not a wizard? Regardless, people flock over this version of Dark Magician is because it's one of the hardest Dark Magicians to find in the history of Yu-Gi-Oh! Being limited to a video game, one of the first video games being introduced into the Yu-Gi-Oh! scene, I think it deserves its price tag. I mean, don't you want to buy three? You know what? It's crazy. Because you can either have three Dark Magicians or the price of rent for a one bedroom in California. Put that in perspective. Moving more towards the competitive side, Minerva is a really expensive card. No, not, not that Minerva. Minerva, the Exalted Light Sworn, the prize card version, is actually worth $1,300 for a super rare. Now, Minerva actually has a really good effect. It requires two level four monsters, and it's effect three, you can detach one material from this card to send the top three cards from your deck to the graveyard. And if you send any light sword monsters to your graveyard, you get to draw cards. Also, if it's destroyed by a card effect, you can send top cards from the deck to your graveyard, and if you send light sword monsters, you get to destroy more cards. Minerva, at one point in time, was the glue that held light sworn strategies together. But unfortunately, due to its absurd price, it didn't see the competitive scene that much. It was later reprinted as a secret rare inside of a Battles of Legends set, but once the death settled for Minerva, it was a little too late. A cool little fun fact about this card is I said the super rare versions of this card were about $1,300. The secret rare being the highest rarity sits at about $8.00. But the Ultra Rare is the most expensive version of this card. It's so expensive, there's literally none on the market. So Minerva can be right here on this list or higher. Now we have to move back to the casual side of Yu-Gi-Oh! As Dark Magician Girl does make this list and she's rather expensive. Not just any Dark Magician Girl that'll make this list, it's the Magician Force version of a Dark Magician Girl that is worth $1,400. Now, if you guys already know, Dark Magician is a level 6 spellcaster monster that gains 300 attack for every Dark Magician in either player's graveyards. That's it. If I can remember correctly, this is the very first printing of Dark Magician Girl, and the Magician's Force set is relatively old. So you can find those two facts together, along with Dark Magician Girl, is a sought-after card. Even the newer versions of Dark Magician Girl are a lot more expensive than what they should be. Having an OG version of this card should be worth a decent amount of money. Now, I'm pretty sure you guys clicked on this video because Blue Eyes by Dragon is widely recognized as one of the most expensive cards in Yu-Gi-Oh! The crazy thing about this is that, yes, it's true. A lot of players may have opened a Blue Eyes by Dragon in their childhood from the Legend of Blue Eyes set. Now, here is a couple of things that may have been wrong with it. If it just so happened to have this on the back, it's not the blue eyes we're looking for. This is an Asian English blue eyes white dragon, and it's not necessarily legal for tournament play. If you have pulled a first ed blue eyes white dragon from the Legend of Blue Eyes set, then you're probably sitting around $2,000 for a single copy of this card. Now, I hate to break a lot of people's hearts, but this only applies for near mint versions of Blue Eyes White Dragon. There are tons and tons of damaged versions of this card. So while you might just possibly have a Legend of Blue Eyes Blue Eyes White Dragon, and it could possibly be first ed, it only applies to a near mint copy of this card. So if you do have it, then you just racked in a ton of money for taking care of your cards. Now Blue Eyes White Dragon does come in a two-way tie with Blue Eyes White Dragon. It's like the ultimate engine of destruction, so why not tie with yourself, right? There is another particular copy of Blue Eyes White Dragon that's just expensive as the Legend of Blue Eyes First Dead version. And that just so happens to be the Dark Duel Stories version that Dark Magician also came in. Imagine buying this game and not opening it. I mean, it sounds ridiculous when you obviously bought the game, but you have at least $3,000 sitting in your game. Not to mention that you probably have to add at least another thousand if it's a near mint sealed copy. You have to wonder what are the most expensive video games for Yu-Gi-Oh! Huh, maybe for another video. Blue Eyes White Dragon does take two of the spots in the top three, but it's not the most expensive card in Yu-Gi-Oh! currently. It is still a legendary dragon in a powerful engine of destruction, and very few have faced this creature and lived to tell the tale. There you have it. The most expensive card in Yu-Gi-Oh! 
just so happens to actually have been competitive in quite a few spots. Now, this particular card has been reprinted time after time again, so once I say this card's name, be sure to check the particular set. You may be sitting on a gold mine of a card. The most expensive card in the Yu-Gi-Oh card game in mass circulation is Morphin Jar. Now, who would have thought a card that has maybe made two appearances in the entire series would be the most expensive card in the card game? Regardless, Morphing Jar does sit at a whopping $2,400 at the time of recording this video. Its effect is actually pretty decent when you compare it to all of the other cards on this list. If it's flipped face up, both players must discard their entire hand and draw five cards. Now, Morphing Jar was used in competitive play. It was best used when your opponent had five cards in their hand and you had little to none. Morphing Jar would grant you five free cards in your hand and potentially disrupt your opponent's entire combo. I would also like to point out when I say Morphing Jar is a very expensive card, I don't mean every Morphing Jar. Specifically, the Tournament Pack 2 Morphing Jar is where the money's at. The other Morphing Jars aren't, aren't worth the time. Well, that's all that I have for the most expensive cards in Yu-Gi-Oh! I want you guys to post down below in the comment section some cards that you guys feel are really expensive. Also, if you really like this video, be sure to give it a like and share it with a friend. I hope you guys are having an amazing day and staying safe like I am.